All right, class, here we are with Kaylin Parker, a recent graduate of the SIU forestry program. Um, he's a park and wildland specialization guy while I was here and has gone on to do a tour of duty with the Forest Service out in Colorado, which is sort of that mythical land out west, right? Um, I made it. Yeah, Kaylin strung it all together and made it happen. So Kaylin, uh, where'd you work recently? What's next for you? what kind of words of sage advice and cautionary tales do you have for folks who are looking to follow in your footsteps? Yes, so I worked one season as part of the OHV crew off highway vehicle motorized recreation on the San Isabel National Forest, San Carlos Ranger District, south, like south southern Colorado. And pretty much the, the romantic view of it is <laughs> <laughs> riding around in ATVs with chainsaws cutting trees all day and for the most part that's what we did but uh, due to a, a lack of uh, work power like workforce manpower uh, we had to do recreation type work too like rec techs so you're working on a trail crew but you ended up doing all kinds of other stuff mm -hmm. rec related beyond just trail construction and maintenance yeah so okay. we, were, we were building fences staining campgrounds, giving out surveys, to making visitor contacts. We were patrolling on holidays, uh, making signs, installing those signs, fixing signs. So just a big amalgamation of whatever the forest needs recreation-wise that was funded through REC. Okay, so you are saying um, a little bit earlier that uh the crew was a little bit smaller than planned. There was one guy who was hired, but just kind of never showed up. Yeah, or... he, he bailed last minute, which was, it ended up actually being good for us as a crew, because okay. we ended up staying uh, about a month and a half longer. We were supposed to end on September 30th, but because we had the extra money from the state, we're, we're funded through grants. Okay. Uh, and we had that extra man's salary to kind of cushion ourselves, we got a little more overtime, and nice. we got a little more regular time so we could do more projects, get more work done as a crew. Okay, so his flaking out actually turned out to give you a lot more variety and some extra cash in your pocket, yeah. but it meant doing a lot of stuff outside of the original job description. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was, well, you know, on the job description, it was technically an, a trail crew member, not trails and recreation. All right, I ended so up doing trails and rec. What uh, what GS level did you start at? What other GS levels were involved? Like other folks on the crew? Yeah. And uh, sort of formal title. So we were a three man crew. Uh, one crew leader, two crew members. Uh, the crew leader is typically a, a level higher. Uh, we're all GS fours. This okay. year we were all GS fours. Uh, not exactly sure why, but that's that's what happened. Uh, okay. Our station manager, uh, the supervisor above us all at the work center, was a was on a track. He was a five six seven, and each year he'd be bumped up. So three years ago he was a five. Last year he was a six. This year he just made a seven. Cool. Okay. Right on. And then because it's a five six seven track, you would not expect to go higher to eight and nine, so we'd have to change job descriptions, maybe yeah. change locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, right on. Was it a temp seasonal, permanent seasonal, permanent full-time? What kind of shape is there to what you did? So it was a temporary seasonal position okay. with a not to exceed 1,039 hours appointment. All so right, so this is a 1039. At 40 hours a week, that's about six months of work. Right on. Of okay. course, you could work overtime that counts, I think. You work credit time, which is like comp on top of your 40 hours a week. Okay. But as, as general, that's about six months of work. So somebody coming out of the forestry program, um, having taken the classes, going to summer camp, um, you were an Eagle Scout, did a bunch of cool stuff with like Forestry Club and stuff like that. Um, what you walked into a GS4, mm -hmm. uh, put that all together. What kind of advice do you have for folks? You know, it's 
halfway through November right now. There's a bunch of job postings out for next summer and spring with the Forest Service and mm -hmm. all the other agencies and stuff like that. What kind of expectations should other graduates getting ready to graduate have as far as what to shoot for? GS4, GS5, GS7, yes or no? Shoot for a five. Don't be disappointed if you land a four. That's what I, that's what I ended up doing. Solid. Uh, you're technically qualified for a GS5 with a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. but out there, uh, even if you have a bachelor's and you don't have much experience with the forest already, the forest service already, it's nice to just get that feet on the ground experience first, mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to use your degree to okay. move up the ladder. And so you worked through that and ended up working a little bit longer because the one crew member was out. Um, what's next? Are you moving up and moving out in the Forest Service, switching agencies, switching focus entirely? Well, uh, I've, I've learned to take it in shorter terms after the summer because we were very spontaneous in our adventures, both on and off work. Right on. Um, okay. So first thing I did don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid to go to the employment office after you're laid off for the season. They'll give you a sheet, a standard form, you go in, fill it out, mm -hmm. and if you're qualified, you can get a little bit in the meantime. You know, just kind of as a cushion. Mm -hmm. So I did that, uh, waiting for that to kind of fall through. And in a couple, I guess in several weeks, I will be making the move out to Vermont to work as a private entity for a while just to see how that goes get my feet wet okay on a maple uh, syrup maple. production facility yep for crown maple uh they're based out of new york and they've got a piece of property in vermont that i will be working in support of. right on okay so i think the point that you had earlier about uh any substantial differences between what it's like to be a forestry student versus a forestry professional at the Forest Service. So the stuff we talk about in class, the sort of work environment, so to speak, of being a student, pretty much the same, pretty different, another planet? It's, it's pretty different, I think. Uh, and I find it at times hard to explain how different it is. Uh, it just comes down to the people you end up working with and being able to get along with them. So I guess it, it is a little bit alike having like a field class and being part of a group project and having to you know get everyone on the same page. If, if people aren't on the same page, uh, especially in like a trail crew job, uh, stuff can go wrong pretty quick. Because it's long hours with the same small team maybe? Yeah. And so doing all kinds of different stuff you're talking about uh, small engine repair, learning yeah. that along the way, talking about um, you helped sort of bust up um, a marijuana grow mm -hmm. operation in Colorado, even though it's legalized there. Yes. Um, and chainsaw the path so that the pack animals could get there to pack that stuff out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right on. So th there's a lot of, there's a lot of communication between the different departments like recreation trails, timber, fire, law enforcement, mm -hmm. and everyone else. Okay. All the ologists. All the ologists. That's a thing across multiple agencies, the ologists. Yes. Um, all right, so what about the what about the disposition of some of the other guys that were on that crew? Did everybody else sort of scatter to the four winds? Did anybody else stay on the forest? Kind of where'd, where'd they end up as far as you know? Uh, our supervisor's still there. He's got a good gig going. Okay. Uh, so he'll be staying there for, you know, he's probably gonna retire there as the station manager. Uh, my two crewmates, my crew leader, uh, he's going into grad school uh, for oil. Okay. He's a geologist right on. Uh, by education. Uh, my other crew member, uh, he's environmental science, more of a NEPA guy, but uh, he's going the ski bum route. So he'll be working up in Breckenridge this winter Classic policy guy move. Just kidding. Okay. And hopefully doing... He might come back for another season. Okay. 
<laughs> but uh, the other guy doing grad school, that'll be a couple years, so I think he's done with his tour of duty. Oh. All right. Well, thanks for giving us a couple of minutes uh, of what life is really like out there in the real world as you practice adulting. Um, if you had one chance to sort of grab everybody by the lapels and shake them and say, you've got to do this or you got to watch out for this, as they're looking to switch from school to the, like career-oriented employment, what would you tell them to do or what would you warn them away from? Don't be afraid. Just don't be afraid. Try stuff out. Keep an open mind. Try everything. Uh, be willing to learn new things. And just go with the flow. Right on. Okay. Thanks very much. No problem.